Today we're finally back with another episode of Flippin' Friday. What took you so long? And today we're using my personal favorite budget CPU and GPU combo, as well as a budget case that's completely dominating the PC flipping market right now. Let's start building. <laughs> Starting with the CPU, here we have what's now considered a Ryzen OG, the Ryzen 5 3600, and this 6 core and 12 threaded chip used to dominate the mid range builds just a few short years ago. Back in 2019, when this chip was brand new, this CPU could be paired with literally any graphics card without bottlenecking it, and that means that today in 2023, it's become a really solid budget option on the used market. What is that? Missy, missy, missy. A ton of people bought the 3600 when it first launched, and now this is about the normal time when those people sell it to upgrade to something better, so it's a really hot product right now for budget builds and flips. The motherboard we're plugging the 3600 into is way more boring. This is just the Asus Prime B450M-A2, and this was simply the cheapest option that I could find for this project that had a somewhat white and black color scheme. The used AM4 motherboard market is still very hit or miss right now, and more often than not, it's just better to go with a brand new board as opposed to a used one. You can obviously sometimes find a really good deal for like less than 50 bucks, but right now most AM4 and especially B450M motherboards are around 60 to $70 used, and at that point you might as well mitigate the possible issues that you could have and just buy a brand new one for around 80 bucks. That's at least my philosophy right now during the current motherboard market. And real quickly before we move on to the RAM selection, if you're trying to keep those profit margins high for your PC flipping business, then today's video sponsor can definitely help you out with that. Today's video is sponsored by GVG Mall, and you probably probably already know that I've been using them for so long to activate Windows on a ton of my own builds. They're actually running a huge sale right now which boosts my normal 18% discount up to 25% off if you use code ZTT18 and I'll have that linked at the top of the description. They not only have Windows keys but also a ton of other stuff such as Office and even game keys for platforms like Steam, Origin, and Uplay and they even have console stuff too like PSN and Xbox prepaid cards as well. Activating Windows is super simple and only takes like 3 minutes total so activate Windows today and remove that nasty watermark and don't forget to use ZTT18 for 25% off. So next up we have the RAM and here I actually dipped my toes in the used market and stumbled on this HyperX all white 2 byte 8 gigabyte kit that's clocked at 3200 megahertz and I got this for a pretty solid price of just $36. Now just like the motherboard here's a place where most of the time it makes sense to go with a brand new kit but that's because the RAM prices are so cheap these days that the difference between new and used just isn't usually a lot. At the time I was putting together this project this $36 kit was the cheapest all white kit that I could find but you absolutely can repeat this price point with a brand new kit if there's a decent deal going on. After that, we got to do something about the storage, and I went with a very boring Team MP33 512 gigabyte NVMe drive, but I do have an alternative part for you, and I'm starting to see this become more and more attractive lately. This MSI Spadium M450 drive has been going on some killer sales for both the 512 gigabyte and one terabyte model, and this is actually a much better drive than the MP33. Not only is this drive still TLC with slightly faster read and write speeds than the MP33, but this is also a PCIe Gen 4 drive, which is another thing that you can market in your sales posting. Most people buying pre-built gaming PCs probably don't know what the difference between PCIe Gen 3 and Gen 4, but it's still an advantage to advertise Gen 4 to the people that would know that it's better, so I pick up this drive over the MP33 if you see it go on another sale. And finally, to polish off this motherboard prep, we have the CPU cooler, and today we're going with my trusty old painted stock Ryzen cooler because our 3600 came with it. If your CPU does not come with the original cooler, you can always go with something like the Thermalrite Assassin an X120 SE ARGB, which only ever costs around 20 bucks. But if I can save money by painting this stock cooler myself, I'm gonna do it. This is actually exactly what we do with our Frost Nova V3 gaming PCs over on ZTTBuilds.com. And we've sold over 35 of these units so far. So clearly buyers don't mind if you do it this way. We actually just refreshed all of our builds over there with better performance specs, such as the Icebreaker getting upgraded to the RX 6600. And I'll have the link to ZTTBuilds.com down in the description for you. Moving on, it's time to get to our power supply and we'll have another chat about this one real quick. As we all know, the power supply market is horrendous right now, and it's easily the hardest PC component to shop for right now for budget builds specifically. Usually, I'll be throwing in a Thermaltake 550 watt BM2 in these builds, but that PSU has been MIA for over a month. What the f 
fuck is that? Now, so we have to resort to even worse options. Here we have the BitPhoenix Formula Bronze 600 watt, and I actually got this for a decent price of $45, but this deal didn't last long. From what I can see, it's actually not too bad as it's got plenty of wattage, it's 80 plus bronze certified, which is what the casual buyers care about, and it's also rated tier C on the PSU tier list, which is what I care about. Now, I'm not 100% up to speed on this model specifically, and I don't know if it's one of the better or worse tier C models, but for a budget $400-ish dollar gaming PC, I think it's perfectly fine. Now, one thing to note is that the power supply does come with ketchup and mustard cables, and you absolutely cannot expose these for a gaming PC flip if you want to make a lot of money, so you have to pair it with cable extensions, which is exactly what I did, of course. For today, I'm just using the Asia Horse White Extension Kit, and this has actually been consistently on sale lately for 19 bucks for the past several weeks, so it's been the only kit that I've really been buying. Whenever these creep up to around the $22 to $23 mark, I'll usually explore some other options from Easy DIY or whoever else, but at 19 bucks, I'm gonna go with Asia Horse any day of the week because they're the best. But now that everything is prepped, it's finally time to talk about this new case meta, and if you've been watching my channel this month, then you'll already know that this is the DIY PC ARGB Q3, and it's been dominating the budget PC flipping scene, like I said in the intro. This is actually the third one that's coming to the studio in the past month, but this is my first time personally building inside of it. I first checked out the case in person when we bought a $500 Jawa pre-built PC undercover, and then I just used it last week in my budget Diablo 4 build video, which I definitely recommend checking out if you haven't already. Sam built that PC, by the way, it wasn't me. The reason why this is dominating the market lately, though, is because if it's clearly Lee and Lee 011 knockoff design, but for an all-glass micro ATX case that comes with three pre-installed RGB fans, it's rocking some serious value at only costing 60 bucks. I absolutely love this dual chamber design because it allows for plenty of room in the back to bunch up and hide your sloppy cable management, and most people tend to favor this low-to-the-ground design lately, so it looks great on top of your desk. The only downside is that I think PC flippers like myself and our community in the ZTT Discord server, which is linked down below, by the way, absolutely smashed the order button, and it's been out of stock or on back order for a few weeks now. Hopefully it comes back into stock soon, but be prepared to buy this one quick because a lot of people are buying it, and if you scroll on Jabba right now, then you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. One weird thing that I just discovered with the case, I'm not sure if this is a mistake with the manufacturer or if this is just normal, but our case arrived without one of the PCIe brackets up top, and I've seen some manufacturers do that before, but they include it in the accessories kit, and our accessories kit does not have one. And the reason why this is a problem for this case is because when you put in your graphics card, the one that's missing is not for the GPU. It's the slot above the GPU. So that hole is still gonna be here. And then with these other brackets that are down here, normally you would be able to just move them up, but these are the breakaway style. So I can't just reinstall this. So if you're gonna use this case and if this is just the normal thing, or maybe we just got unlucky, this is why it's always just a good idea to keep your other brackets from different cases. That way I can just simply install this up here. It's from a different case, but it'll fit perfectly fine just like that because we don't want to leave a huge gap like that. And finally, to polish off this build, we have one more part to install. This here is none other than my favorite, the Asus Dual GTX 1060 6GB, which looks beautiful in an all-white build like this. Now, before you think you're an expert and just assume the GTX 1060 is awful, you'll need to stick around for these benchmarks because this GPU is still playing literally every game in 1080p these days with some good FPS numbers, especially if you get the 6GB version, which is what we have. I scooped this one off Java for just 68 bucks recently, and despite having to pay slightly more for an all-white version of literally any PC component, this is still a pretty solid purchase. So in terms of controlling the RGBs on these three pre-installed fans, there's actually two methods of doing it. And the first one is a typical three-pin ARGB connector, which you could just plug into your motherboard that's somewhere buried under this rat's nest. But if you're using a budget motherboard, which chances are high you're gonna do that if you're building inside this case, the other option you can use is it comes with this connector here and you can route the reset switch button from your case directly to here, you'll lose the ability to hit the reset button, but most people don't even use that, so you should be perfectly fine. And then you'll end up just pressing the reset switch to control the colors of the RGB. So I'm very glad that they include both ways to do it, especially for a budget case when you're using a budget motherboard that probably doesn't have ARGB. Problem though is I gotta reroute that. <laughs> <laughs> But before getting into those benchmarks, here's what the entire build is looking like. And in my opinion, this is a very typical aesthetic design for a ZTT build at this point. I absolutely love when I can rely on mostly the case to do the aesthetic work for us because these glass panels and RGB fans just look so good from all the different angles. When you combine this case with all white components inside like the RAM, GPU extensions, and a painted CPU cooler, then you have a build that looks much more expensive than the total price I paid for, which was only $398. If you're not a PC flipper and you just want an ultra 
budget build. This is the exact parts list that I would try to copy. And next we'll see just how much value you're actually getting with the performance. Here's the benchmarks that we ran and I wasn't kidding. This Ryzen 5 3600 and GTX 1060 six gigabyte combo can still kick it here in 2023. And it played literally every game we tested, including the tougher to one runs like Hogwarts Legacy, just fine without any issues. And for the easier to run titles such as Valorant and Minecraft, a PC like this can absolutely smoke these types of games for sure. And for one last benchmark, here we have the Time Spy score, just so you have a consistent comparison across all of my builds if you're debating about which one to copy. And just in case you feel like you'll need some extra help with your next gaming PC or gaming PC flip, feel free to hit me up on zaxtechdrop.com slash consulting. I'd love to help you out one-on-one -on -one to make sure you're buying and building everything correctly so you have peace of mind before making any purchases. So hopefully you enjoyed this episode of Flippin' Friday. Feel free to click the playlist that's on the screen now to get caught up on all the other Flippin' Friday episodes, especially if you want to make some money with PC flipping. But I'll catch you guys in the next video.